Hello friends, how are you doing out there? I hope the markets are treating you well and you're making good money from your trades. Friends, in this video, I want to talk to you about why I think the OPEC is dying. And if you stick with me till the end of this video, I will also tell you what it means for India's fossil fuel imports, which means crude and natural gas, and how we stand to benefit. So it is impossible to be a trader in natural gas and or crude oil without understanding the politics behind the commodity. It is a serious flaw on a trader's part and I've gone through the process of this evolution uh, uh, of uh, thinking that crude and natural gas are barely commodities. They are about geopolitics, they are about military, they are about uh, terrorism, they are about financial speculation, uh, uh, they are about deceit and they are also about commodities. So you need to understand a whole lot of things before actually putting out a trade out there, which is why the probability of success in natural gas especially is so adverse for traders because you tend to focus only on the trading aspect and forget all the other aspects. So uh, uh, my uh, weekly cash alert subscribers and other equity master subscribers, the veteran ones will remember how we started making videos uh, probably in July or August of 2019. And prior to that, I used to write articles on the website. And one of the early articles that I wrote is OPEC is dying. Now, I'd like to share my thoughts with you why and what it means for us. Recently, there was a, a news article on uh, Bloomberg.com, a very reliable uh, news media website, that Bahrain is a member of the OPEC and is in severe distress, is witnessing severe distress, and it is looking out for a bailout. It's already been bailed out earlier. Uh, uh, 10 billion dollars uh, aid has been provided by other uh, fellow uh, OPEC members but now thanks to uh, the COVID based lockdowns all efforts to revive the economy have run into a concrete wall and Bahrain is distressed all over again. This should set you thinking. An oil exporter, a Middle East country in severe financial distress. Recently, Qatar has started borrowing money aggressively and I read a media statement uh, 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 saying that, uh, you know, we actually don't need the money, but because money is available cheap and yields are low, we are just borrowing money. Tell that to the Marines, right? Qatar is one of the biggest borrowers in the emerging market space and definitely in the Middle East. Uh, it's a very aggressive borrower. Now, when the interest meter is ticking, you need to ask yourself whether you need to open the few taps of uh, oil and gas or are you going to resort to production cuts to raise prices. At the recent uh, uh, meeting of uh, OPEC Plus, Thursday and Friday saw no decision being made last week. But on Monday, when the meeting came together again, there was actually acrimony. The United Arab Emirates, uh, led by uh, Abu Dhabi, went at loggerheads with Saudi Arabia and the meeting broke up with strong words being spoken on both sides. The Russian Deputy Prime Minister Alexander Novak tried to broker a peace very, very uh, uh, proactively, but he was unable to do so. Now, the Russians themselves are very distressed. Alexander Novak would love to have 2 million barrels of oil output being raised per day. The crux of the problem between UAE and Saudi Arabia is oil output baselines, but it goes beyond that. Bear with me. Now, Abu Dhabi has spent a lot of money in upgrading its oil infrastructure and obviously it wants, it wants returns. So, selling more oil is the way out and it is pumping out 9 lakh barrels less than what its slated capacity is and the Saudis are not allowing them to pump out more. But that's not all. 
you need to go back in time in june 2017 or possibly even uh, uh, prior to that but let's begin at june 2017 at what really happened al jazeera uh, a popular uh, news channel uh, of qatar showed uh, uh, his highness uh, uh, king salman on television as a pencil sketch now this is anti sharia idol worship uh, 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 denoting uh, uh, a god or goddesses uh, as uh, uh, idols or uh, drawings etc is not uh, uh, tolerated by sharia and the saudi king is supposed to be god now this started a diplomatic standoff between qatar and saudi arabia which resulted in a military blockade an embargo on qatar by uae kuwait saudi arabia and egypt they circled qatar from all three sides and the fourth is uh, the ocean and therefore qatar got isolated qatar walked out of opec in 2019 now this is something that i wrote in uh, in my column in first post in 2018 when i used to write for them and 2019 i joined equity master and i started writing for equity master that opec is dying now look at the fissures the the fractions that are within opec you have the shias you have the sunnis you have non opec members who are now opec plus right russia is a non opec member it also wants to sell more oil now why have the saudis prevailed as a dominant force in opec is because of its leadership position in the reserves of crude oil that they have so when they embargoed qatar the uae thought that there could be some some kind of an alignment between the saudis and the uae and the rivalry that is there in selling more crude oil can somehow be eased but then something really strange happened prince mohammed bin salman who has something called the vision 2030 of making saudi arabia a hub of global financial business not just reliant on oil started reforming saudi arabia saudi women are not allowed to drive saudis are not allowed to view movies there are no movie theaters till recently in saudi arabia if they wanted to uh, if the women saudi women wanted to drive or if they wanted to watch movies men and women they had to go to nearby uh, dubai or abu dhabi to have fun now the saudis allowed women to drive in their own country the saudis have opened up movie theaters which were hitherto anti sharia not allowed by sharia and dubai which has very little oil if at all is surviving on global business uh, 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 where expatriates are allowed to come stay set up uh, offices and factories and aid the economy the saudis are putting an end to that they are now insisting that uh, uh, major multinational companies which want to do business in saudi arabia must have their headquarters in saudi arabia rather than dubai or abu dhabi now these are issues that are being ignored by oil traders in my humble opinion all right now it's not just about oil that the united arab emirates is fighting with saudi arabia and when these issues are now coming out in the open the icing on the cake came when prince mohammed bin salman announced that saudi arabia would float its own aggressive low cost airline which would compete with the the uae airlines qatar airways etihad etc etc emirates now Saudi Arabia is basically trying to take away even the airline revenues from them and it's not just about airlines he also wants to make Saudi Arabia the hub of the Middle East where people transit to and fro if they are traveling from east to west they should go via Saudi Arabia rather than Dubai just think of the Dubai airports duty free shopping etc etc that is what Saudi Arabia is got its eyes on Prince Mohammed bin Salman is open to the idea of opening up talks secretly of course with the israelis he is also open to the idea of talking to iranians because 
nobody wants a, a long running strife. Now he's basically rubbing a lot of the old school conservative uh, uh, Wahhabis the wrong way, which is why the differences between OPEC members are coming out wide in the open. Now they might rebel, which I think is a very distinct possibility. Remember Qatar walked out in 2019, 2019, yeah, Ecuador walked out of OPEC and UAE has already threatened to walk out of OPEC in 2020. Of course, now they are saying that this time around things have changed and they don't want to break OPEC. But later on, my guess is it's likely to happen, which is why once the break starts uh, occurring, which will take uh, uh, far less time than you think it will, everybody will start pumping out oil to the best capacity possible and selling it in the market and raising money. Which is why I think crude oil of $100 a barrel is either a stretched out philosophy or even if it reaches $100 a barrel, it will go there for a photo opportunity only to fall back sharply. Everybody seems to be bluffing. This is of course my point of view and I reserve the right to be wrong. This is the way I see it from my lens. And so far so good for the last uh, a couple of decades when I've traded oil, this philosophy has stood me in good stead. Now, what will possibly happen in a post OPEC scenario before we say rest in peace OPEC? What about the future? I think the Russians will remain a dominant force as uh, oil exporters in the international market. On the other hand, you will have the Americans. So far, the Americans have catered to its own uh, uh, friends in the Middle East and North Africa who are primarily Sunni countries that will continue. Russians, by default, have been with the Iranians and its uh, 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 satellite countries, which are Shia in nature. So I would say that ideologically, the OPEC will be split in the center between Shias and Sunnis, with the Shias going with the Russian faction and the Sunnis going with the Americans. How will it help India? How are oil importers impacted? Hey, right now, OPEC as a dominant cartel, having a lion's share of the global output of crude determines prices like a cartel. It causes shortages and rigs up prices. From one cartel, you're going to have two cartels. Now, both these guys will have to compete to make money. So if one guy gives a discount, the other guy will also have to give a discount. Who do you think faces an advantage? The buyer. The buyer is able to negotiate better deals, which is why I think OPEC, which is nearing unraveling, which is why I've, I've named this uh, video OPEC is dying. Rest in peace, OPEC. I think it's a good thing for the buyers, at least. And we will be able to gain by getting lower prices for our crude and gas imports. There is a silver lining at uh, 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 the edge of these dark clouds. I would look at it as a passing phase and I'm looking forward to developments, which I will, of course, update my viewers in this uh, 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 YouTube channel via updates whenever required. On this happy note, I bid goodbye to you in this video, not before reminding you to click like on this video. If you liked what you saw, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here in the comment section. Good, bad or ugly. Keep them coming and help me reach out to fellow like minded investors and traders by referring my video to your family and friends. I wish you have a very, very profitable day ahead till we meet again in my next video. This is Vijay Bambani signing off for now. Take very good care. Bye bye. Also, do not forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter, Fast Profits Daily, and get my free guide, How to Trade Markets Like a Pro.